Hey, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on rigging and using popping corks for fishing inshore. These are very effective for trout, snook, tarpon, and redfish. Very effective, and the main idea of these is to make noise in order to draw attention to whatever lure or bait that you might have attached to the popping cork. Now, there are different types of sizes, colors, and shapes of the popping cork. Uh, this is your standard large oval shape in a green chartreuse color. They also sell them in a bright orange, uh, pink, and even yellow, and all kinds of different colors, but the color to me really doesn't matter. Um, the color is more just for you to see. The fish aren't really honed in on the popping cork itself. However, sometimes you will get strikes um, on the popping cork. The fish will actually strike the cork itself, but you really want them to get to that lure in honesty, I don't really want to draw too much attention to the cork itself. That's just really to make the noise to draw the fish to your lure. Now there's also a more smaller size popping cork. This is a small, um, more narrow oval type of cork. Better for if you're casting in the wind because it's a lot skinnier and it won't catch the wind as much as the larger cork will. Another thing about these corks, some of them are weighted and some of them aren't which means the weighted ones, if you see on the bottom here, they have these uh, metal or brass beads on the bottom that helps weigh it down and keeps it sitting upright when you, you do stop the retrieve of the popping cork. If you don't choose to use a weighted one, it will just have these regular plastic or glass beads on the bottom instead, instead of those uh, metal beads down there. So these popping corks, they can actually be used with artificial bait or live bait. So I'm gonna show you both ways on how to rig them up. First, I'm gonna show you artificial lures. My top lure to use with the popping cork is a gulp shrimp um, in a new penny color, three inch size. A great lure, it draws a lot of attention with the color and also the scent disbursement of the gulp products definitely helps draw those fish in as well when combined with the noise of the popping cork. So I like to go with a gulp shrimp and then I will rig it on a red 1 16th ounce jig head. I like to go a little light with the jig head, that way the lure uh, or the soft plastic kind of falls a little slower after you retrieve the cork and do a couple twitches. So the lure falls nice and slow, then you can twitch it again. If you go with too heavy of a weight, you're gonna twitch it and the lure is gonna fall straight to the bottom. It's not gonna be uh, sort of a natural presentation. So that's why I like to go with the lighter jig head. Plus you have enough weight on your line with the popping cork and your lure and everything else on there so you won't have a problem casting it out. Now I will also use the gulp jerk shads on the popping cork and I'll rig them on the standard 3 out owner twist lock hook, 1 16th ounce size and it's a 3 aught. and I will rig uh, the gulp jerk shad on there. You can also rig the gulp shrimp on there as well. And if you need to uh, use a little more weight to get it down a little quicker if you need to. I like to go with the same uh, jig head that I would use for the shrimp. It works just as well with the gulp jerk shad. Now, when you are tying your leader to the popping cork, you're gonna tie your main line to the top of the popping cork, the side that isn't weighted, and then the side that is weighted, that's where you will attach your leader material. I like to go with fluorocarbon. 15 to 20 pound is plenty. Uh, plenty strong enough to pull in redfish, snook, trout, tarpon. Um, if you are targeting uh, snook more particularly, you might wanna go probably 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon, just so they don't cut through that line as easily as they would with 20 pound. Now I have a rod rigged up here already with a popping cork and a jig head. Get it out here. This is a matrix float. This is a popping cork as well. You can see it makes that noise. It's got the weights on the bottom. And I tied it to my main line with a polymer knot to the braid, and then used a trilene knot to attach the leader to the bottom of the popping cork. Now the length of your leader is really gonna depend on how deep you're fishing, how far down you want that lure to go. Now if you are fishing in the grass, you don't want that lure, especially if you have a jig head, you don't want that lure going into the grass, then you're gonna start snagging grass. So if you are fishing grass, it's probably a wise choice to go with the weedless hook. That way you don't get tangled in any grass and you're not pulling 
any grass with your lure. Now the standard size is about anywhere from 18 inches to two feet of leader. And then when you tie your jig head or your hook on, with the jig head, I like to go with a tight knot on there, cinch down, because as this lure falls, if you cinch that, cinch that knot down really tight, you'll notice the hook sits at a horizontal level right there. And that looks more natural as the bait's falling and goes into the water. If you have it to the top, it's just gonna hang straight up and down, doesn't look normal. So, little word of advice, when you do, every time you bring the lure in, just kind of adjust that knot to the top of the jig head there and cinch it down. That way it sits nice and level and a more natural presentation. So as far as rigging the popping cork with live bait, same goes for when you're rigging up artificials as far as the leader goes and the knots. The only difference is I like to go with a number two circle hook. That circle hook is great because you don't have to set the hook. The fish will grab onto that bait and hook itself. It's kind of hard to set the hook with a popping cork because that cork will cause a lot of drag in the water and that will reduce your ability to get a good hook set. So go with that circle hook. I like to go with the number two. It's nice and small. It's nice and light and it's a thin wire. This is the owner Moodoo Light circle hooks. Thin wire, nice and light. So you can hook a small finger mullet or a pinfish. It won't weigh them down because if you use a big heavy hook you have more of a likelihood of killing that bait because it's gonna drag them down and put a lot of stress on them. Also, when you do rig that live bait on here, if it's a bait fish, you wanna hook it in the top of the base of the tail. You don't wanna hook it underneath the fish because that will cause it to swim upside down, won't be natural. And when you hook them in the tail, they'll swim naturally away from the popping cork and they'll pretty much give that popping cork its own action as they swim away from it. So you don't really have to do much. That bait will actually move the cork and create that noise and help draw those fish into it. In this clip, you'll see I'm using the large oval float popping cork with about two feet, two and a half feet a liter and a gulp shrimp on a 1 16th ounce red jig head. So the best way to cast this rig, you kind of have to keep the rod tip low behind you and then just kind of sling it out almost like a baseball swing. If you do a short snappy cast like you normally would with an artificial lure, you're going to end up tangling up. The line's going to wrap around the cork or possibly the braid above the leader. So just keep that in mind when you are casting it out. Now the way to retrieve this, there really isn't a set pattern uh, set in stone on how to retrieve it. It really depends on the conditions. So you can do a really quick fast retrieve like you would if you were working a topwater lure or you could do a few twitches and just let it sit, pause for a few seconds or even up to a minute or two and just let it sit there. Or you can drift it behind you and let the cork kind of pop in the waves as it's drifting behind you and that will draw in the attention of the fish as well. So that's a great thing about using a popping cork if you're fishing with small children or if you're fishing with someone that isn't really experienced, it's a very easy rig to use and it'll catch you some fish. So that will wrap up this video on rigging and using a popping cork. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you're interested in catching more fish in less time guaranteed, then definitely check out our Salt Strong Insider Club. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.